you were once chairman of Oceanic Bank, which was later cited for various infractions by the regulators. What went wrong with that bank? There are a lot of activities that go on without the knowledge of the members of the board. And sometimes the chairman could find out that this type of thing is going on. And you call on the management, and the management denies before you, what do you do? And that's what may have happened in Oceanic Bank. And in a case like this, when I found out things like that, I report to her authority. And we investigated and found that, yes, we're right. So is, is that what you did? Yeah. How does the corporation, working in a country where there has been a collapse of uh, values, help to make a difference with transference of their corporate culture? That is assuming that they can. Yes, <laughs> let's assume that they can, yes. But when I, generally when a thing like that happens and uh, the values um, has broken down within the system, uh, it is the responsibility of, of, of management and of the board to look at themselves much more closely and see that what is happening is not happening, it's not affecting your own organization. But if it does, the best thing is to cry out. It's to cry out. And we at least when, <laughs> when I was in the system, yes, we crowd. And speaking of values, how has Nigeria's democratic experience contributed to the erosion of societal values? Very badly. And uh, for a system, even a little bank, for a small, um, no matter how small the am amount of money is, to move out of the vault of the bank without permission. He shakes to the knowledge of management and that of the board, depending on the scale. In uh, any of the banks, anything more than, for example, uh, when I was in one of those banks, as a chairman, anything more than five million, five billion, must be brought to the attention of the, of the chairman before any approval is given by management. One of the banks where I was involved as chairman, the board papers that was brought to me shows that, oh, about four potential clients have applied for five billion, no, 10 billion, 10 billion, 10 billion, and 19 billion. And one applied for about five billion. They brought them to the house, I looked at them, there were things that, features that we are supposed to have been used in determining these cases. And I read through the, their files and they were not there. So I had to go to the office, their office myself. Give me your file, the files relevant to these applications. And I read through them. There was nothing, there were nothing in those files that could uh, make me support the applications. So I had to call on the managing director that, please, we will need to set these things aside. And uh, so when we got to the board, I asked my colleagues if they had read through all this. And they said, yes, they have read through. Uh, 
Can we take a decision to set these things aside for now? And they all agreed with me. We turned them down. And unfortunately, the management <laughs> went ahead and started releasing the funds to those accounts. And I got to know about it and said, no, don't, don't do that. But when the central bank and uh, eventually the central bank and uh, uh, Securities and Exchange Commission knew about it, they also came to investigate and found that yes, they have something like that has happened. And who gave them permission to release the money? So it affected the MD and affected currency or accounts accounts officer who did all the release. And uh, we were asked to go. What has our democratic experience contributed to this kind of scenario that you described? See, banking is not really, it's not 100% arithmetic. It has a way of absorbing from the atmosphere, the value standard uh, of rulers of the country, and uh, and that's what's happened when the banks are the platform and the pipelines through which some of these these monies. Uh, of government and of, uh, of, of society flow through. And when you see billions moving from one end to the other without uh, anybody asking questions, especially within the banking industry, the atmosphere is corrupted and nobody queries anybody for moving things. And starts off with perhaps 10 million, 20 million, billion, and billions. People like myself, I get, a, I get scared. The best is to get out of the system. Tell me, what have been your reaction to the revelations that are coming out about the last administration? My reaction is that we have done a lot of damage the system and it must be addressed very seriously. Thank God we have a democratic system working and a due process in place that it needs a leadership that his followers will recognize that ah, this man will not tolerate. And I think to a certain extent, our current president seems to have that, that feature. A few years ago, a friend, uh, Dr. Miles Morrow, my church invited him. Uh, and he was here with us in Nigeria for about eight days. And he says, you know, what I have observed in Nigeria and uh, what I will advise is that we look into the Old Testament where leaders declare a day of jubilee and we declare that day as a date in which we forgive ourselves and start afresh. Because all the cases that are on hand, that he heard about, that he, saw, he read in the newspapers, are such that we will never be able to finish through the due process. And I can see exactly the same thing happening here. Unless there is a way in which you can speed up. Time for another break. Apostle Hefoda Lily and I will be back, and I ask that you please join us again.